Hey folks, Doug Blake with Body Design University. And in this video today, I'm going to continue with a video that um, I did actually last week, which was uh, kind of going through chapter two to give you a better appreciation and context for the IFT training model, where you're going to see um, obviously more specifics on the programming and other components in later chapters. But um, chapter two is a very important chapter and I highly recommend you take a you know, take a little bit more than a minute as you go through that uh, that part of the chapter that speaks to and explains in a sort of a comprehensive way the um, the IFT model and both sides of the um, the house on this, which is the cardiorespiratory and the muscular training. So today I'm going to discuss the other side of it, which is the muscular training component. Keep in mind, chapter two. Uh, gives you some general, but again, uh, general, but again, comprehensive information on both sides. And and I'm I'm always um, uh, interested when students ask me, where was this on the test? Where I, I got this one question and I didn't know where to look because I went into chapter eight or I said, no, 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 no. You got to go back to chapter two because that's where they gave you a comprehensive a general, but they don't go into the specifics of the programming design. They save that for later in the textbook, right? But they give you a, a really good overview, which is why you got to take a deep breath, step back and spend a little time in chapter two. Now, again, uh, previous videos that I've done, I've gone more in depth. I did a video, of course, last week that spoke to the cardiorespiratory side of the IFT model. This week, I wanted to tell you a little bit more, give you some insight and a review of the muscular training. Keep in mind, your job in one sense is to memorize some of the components, um, the general components of the muscular training side and phases that go into it. And this is why ACE has given you now, look, they've given you paragraph upon paragraph. They also gave are giving you um, a table. Let me move uh, forward to that right up here. You see table 2.3. Now, this is going to give you bulleted um, precise information um, that is really explained in the uh, components here. As you can see, my recommendation is going to be this. Take a page when you're studying. Folks, don't just read this stuff. Please, please don't just read it. You're not going to memorize it unless you got a photographic memory. And in that case, why are you even watching the video? Just read the book. But for all of us, the 99.99% of us, got to have paper, pen, write the stuff down. My general recommendation is that at the top of each page, pad, um, notebook, whatever it is, flashcards, even if you're using those, write it at the top. So I would have had already... Um, the the IFT model cardiorespiratory with those three phases. And then I would have now on this side of the house, I would have muscular training. And what are the three phases? You should know this by heart, right? You should know the phases and the components that go along with them. What, why do we do this phase? When should a person move from the initial uh, base training phase to the next phases? When should all of this when should all of this happen? That is, let me get back in here. That is explained clearly in the bottom. Okay, so functional training moves to movement training, moves to load speed training. Read through functional training. What does it focus on? This is one of the things that I would write as bullet points. What does it focus on? Um, on the muscular training goals of establishing, listen to this, or in many cases, re-establishing postural stability, kinetic chain mobility. Now, stop for a second. You you get a question on the exam um, and they ask you the main focus of the load speed training phase is everything except this is where you're going to find that information. Now, uh, ACE will, they'll kind of rehash some of this in later chapters, but this is where you want to spend a little bit of time. You've got to know and understand um, the purpose of each of these phases, uh, because there are some uh, critical, specific uh, descriptions, attributes that you're going to see in one phase that's going to be just a little bit different in the next phase. And they'll ask you that as a question on your exam. And I definitely uh, don't want you to get tripped up on that. So again, keep in mind in this particular video, now we're looking at the muscular 
training side of the house. Um, I will move forward. Let me just move forward and show you that there are some components based on um, how much time you have to study when you're going to be sitting for your exam as to how much of this you want to go through. Now, again, it's really good material. Um, I'm not going to recommend, for the most part, um, spending a whole lot of time trying to uh, go through the ACE sponsored research component, although it's very interesting, good information. Focus on table two, three. My uh, recommendation is always whenever you get to bullet points, uh, in particular, you got to memorize the bullet points. That's kind of the nature of the beast. However, don't, I shouldn't say this as a command, but I'll say it as a recommendation. Try not to memorize what they wrote. If it's more than a couple of words in a bullet point, particularly in this case, um, try and uh, compress that sentence, couple of sentences down into a couple of words or a phrase that makes sense to you that helps you memorize it so that it triggers the appropriate uh, information and material. So in that case, when you're looking at that particular table, I would probably on your first roundabout through it, I would rewrite the table and write exactly what they wrote on there. So I would look at the, you know, the load speed, whatever the functional component. And I would write down those bullet points that they wrote down. Then on my next rewrite, okay, you, you see what I just did. I don't write something and then reread it. No, 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 no. When you go to read the information and the material, you are always rewriting it. Okay, that's a really important tip when it comes to memorizing this information. You are generally never just reading it. No, once you read it and rewrite it, you're going to do the same thing. Read it and rewrite it. It's not read it, rewrite, and then read it over. That's not how you do it. By the way, from a note-taking perspective, really the only reason you're taking notes is to get the writing element to it. So I hope that makes sense. I'm showing you you know, the muscular training side of the house. It goes with the cardiorespiratory side of this, any of the information material that you're going through, make sure you're rewriting the material. Say it out loud if that helps you. But with the muscular training, I would definitely look at that table, rewrite those bullet points. And then, then the next time you rewrite it, you're going to do the same thing. But I am going to recommend, let me see if I can kind of go over this with you just a little bit. I'm going to recommend that you take some of these sentences. So for instance, let's just do one of these. Uh, progress exercise volume and challenge as function improves. Um, I would probably get rid of the word exercise. When I, when I rewrite it, I'm going to say progress volume and challenge. See, because I've already re rewritten the entire sentence, I'm trying to, when I'm, when I'm rewriting bullet points, I'm trying to create logistical triggers to what they have in there. So sometimes it only takes one or two words to trigger from my memory what I, what I had already seen when I wrote it the first time. So I write an entire sentence, but really I don't need to keep rewriting the entire sentence. All I need to write or rewrite is a word or two words, and that will trigger that memory for me. So that's just a little, that's a little study tip, by the way, that's a freebie. Okay. So just keep that in mind as you go through this, um, this part of it. Remember chapter two, very, very important that you know those components here in this IFT, uh, IFT model. And it's going to help you later on in the, in the rest of the chapters. Trust me on that. If this was helpful, you understood the information that I just went over, uh, type the word, understood in that look if you need more info then just go ahead and leave the comment love to get some um critical analysis of the video if you if you feel that um it could be more helpful let me know how i'd be more than happy to do an additional uh, additional video on this particular topic in the description below there is a link if you're interested in getting the most comprehensive study exam uh, materials go ahead and click on there um, full video, full video analysis of each chapter, audio book of each of the chapters, right? Pretty much a reading of the chapter quizzes, practice exams. Also keep in mind every Wednesday night at 6 p.m. Eastern, 5 Central, 
four mountain, three Pacific. I got that right. Um, 6 p.m., 6.30, we do a Quizlet live study session um, where you can actually go through Quizlet live with us. It creates a little bit of uh, competition, lots of fun. Quizlet is, by the way, a great, great study resource. Uh, make sure that you let us know how we can be of assistance. Have a great week. We'll see you next week. Thanks.